Hello, I'm Priestess Autumn Phoenix. You can find me on the following social media platforms at Facebook at Magically Blessed, Instagram Autumn underscore Phoenix One, Twitter Priestess Autumn, Periscope at Autumn Phoenix, and YouTube at Autumn Phoenix. So tonight is a very special broadcast about 10 ways that you can practice witchcraft every single day. If you are a witch and you may not have time to make time to practice witchcraft, these 10 things done can help you quite a lot. When I first got started in the craft, I did not always have time to practice witchcraft, but after joining a authentic coven and paying attention, reading my notes, I was successful in making time to practice witchcraft. Creating change and manifesting your reality does not have to involve elaborate rituals, fancy altars, or channeling spirits. You don't have to work with spirits when doing witchcraft. Some witches do not work with their ancestors or with spirits or with any supernatural creatures. They don't. Some witches just do their craft and just leave it at that. Witchcraft is whatever you want it to be. There is no set rules. There is no, oh, you should do this. You should not do that. If you want that type of control, then you need to maybe become a Jew, a Christian, or a Muslim. But that does not exist in Wicca. Witches don't follow a set rules when it comes to manifesting real change in their lives. Everyday witchcraft involves seeking out ordinary things, mundane things, mundane moments, those where you are performing the smallest and simplest of tasks, and creating magic that flows with your life. Magic is what comes after you have done spell. You do the spell, it manifests the way that you want it to, and that result is called magic. It's the kind of witchcraft you do when you are cooking breakfast, sweeping the floor, mopping the floor, performing your task at work, and even doing Things like being out in nature, taking a walk out in the park. It's not witchcraft. If you've never done it before, it's not what you see in movies and on TV. All that shit is fake. And I've been doing this for many, many years now. I'm a priestess. I can tell you that what you see on TV and in the movies about witchcraft is 100% false. You're viewing the broadcast of a literal witch who is telling you the truth about witchcraft. We are what we, human beings are repeatedly, are what we repeatedly do and what we create for ourselves can be more than just ordinary. The ordinary things, the usual things you do every day, does not have to be boring or blah or make you feel like you don't want to do any type of magic because it's not what you see on TV and in the movies. As witches, our daily habits can be full of intention and magic. We get to decide whether we want to create daily routines that are boring um, or what 
which Christ should be, which is packed with energy to manifest our dreams. One way that you can practice witchcraft every single day is with tea magic. Doing witchcraft that involves tea. Almost everybody drinks tea. So yeah, you can incorporate that tea that you drink every single morning into your craft. You want to begin by visualizing how you want to feel for the day. While you prepare your tea, while you get your things ready to prepare for the tea that you are about to drink, as the steam rises, take a deep breath and speak out loud your intentions. Whatever you want to do to set the mood for that day. Also, if you like to do this too, you can take the sugar and your cup. You may, every spoonful you put in your cup of tea, you may want to speak out loud what you are grateful for with each spoonful. You want to relax and let the, let the tea work its magic. And when it comes to tea, don't drink a particular tea because it is known for being part of being used a lot in the craft. If you don't like a particular tea, then don't buy it. Don't drink it. Buy, drink tea that you actually like. Because tea is not um, cheap. I don't care where you buy it from. Tea is not cheap. <laughs> Especially if you live in a place like um, New York and the taxes are very high here. The second way you can incorporate witchcraft in your everyday life is by washing away negativity. The shower is a place not to just clean your body, but to also cleanse your mind and your spirit. Use your shower routine to remove old residue energy with a simple visualization. Visualize how you want your day to start off once you get out of that shower. As the water washes you, picture all the negative thoughts running off your body and traveling down that dark hole known as the shower drain. Film the comfort, really feel the comfort that the water provides and connect with the element water that makes up 70% of our body. We can't live without water. So this is a good time when you are using water, when you're working with the element of water to really get acquainted with it because we are made up so much of it. Connecting with the element of Water creates a energy field that will awaken your subconscious and strengthen your intuition. When you think about the element of water, because I'm a Scorpio, when you think about the element of water, you think of intuition. Scorpios are very intuitive. I'm very intuitive. I'm not to brag, but I'm never wrong. And my readings or what I predict always comes to pass. It doesn't return void. So if you want to connect with the element of water, wash away the negativity when you're in that shower. That's the second way that you can incorporate witchcraft into your everyday life. The third way is dressing the part of witchcraft. Pick out your clothes, shoes, jewelry and um, your hair accessories with intention. 
Ask yourself how you want to feel for the day. Determine what you want the energy to be like for the day. And then choose the colors that represent it appropriately. Let me give you an example. If you want to attract a new business partner, consider wearing the color green or gold for attraction and prosperity. Gold shirt, gold tie, um, green dress, gold dress, something with the colors green and gold. You can place particular crystals in your pocket or in your purse or in your wallet. When it comes to hair accessories, you can also use feathers. Feathers are used to carry our thoughts and our intentions can be very, can be added to our hair by a hairpin or a hairband, whichever one you may feel is appropriate for the job that you're trying to get or the prosperity you're trying to bring into your life. Um, when it comes to your shoes, you can use what is known as sigil magic. You can draw a personalized sigil on the bottom of your shoes so that each time you walk, you are walking towards your intentions. Your intentions have to be strong enough to bring anything into your life. When it comes to number four, look for signs. Look for signs. Like when you are driving your car, be very mindful of any signs you may see along the way. Spirit speaks to us on the subconscious level with symbols and with numbers. So don't play it off as just a coincidence. That may be spirit very well answering a question that you asked a week or two ago. Number five, kitchen magic. If you are a kitchen witch, this tip will help you quite a lot. We all use our senses when we cook. And you can use it when you are doing kitchen magic. It can create manifestation. When we choose to eat high vibrational foods, we change our frequency. Think about each fresh item and what energy they provide for the body. You can also use various salts and herbal blends to create patterns for particular intentions in your food while you are cooking. You can sprinkle the shape of a pentacle, pentagram, or hearts, whatever. Just get creative, especially if you are a kitchen witch. Let me turn my notes. Number six, this is ground nature, getting back to nature. You know that Wicca is a nature-based religion. Grounding is one of those practices that is important to performing any kind of ritual working. Find your favorite place in nature to walk, and if it's possible, take off your shoes and feel the vibrational pull of the earth. Spend time in isolation, alone in nature, and listen for spirit to speak to you through the trees, the flowers, even the animals, sometimes the earth itself, 
because this can boost your creativity. Number seven, pay yourself. Money magic. When it's time to pay bills, especially now since we are in the beginning of the new year, you might have bills coming in from spending so much money throughout the holiday. Those bills are starting to slowly come in. Let me help you with that. When it's time to pay bills, release and attract. Release and attract. Sprinkle a attracting prosperity powder on any checks, any, um, what's the other stuff called? Yeah, any checks. I can't think of the other word. Any checks you write or money you send out to draw the money back to you. Double in it. If you pay bills online, you can use tax receipts you save each month or expense reports and use your powder the same way. Physically write yourself a check each time you pay a bill. Each time you pay a bill, write yourself a check. And whatever amount you see fit, whatever amount of money that you need, and attract that money to you like a magnet. And say a incantation that you make for your own to make it happen to bring that money to you. Let me see. Number eight. Floor magic. This comes with sweeping a floor or mopping a floor. Clean not just the dirt, but the energy too that's on the floor. Sweep away the negative, mop away the negative, wash away, wash away the yuck, and fill your space with high vibrational energy to transform the energy of the house one of the best ways listen to me one of the best ways to move energy in a space is to declutter if you're a pack rat throw your shit out throw the shit that you don't need out what the hell are you holding on to it for declutter if you don't have anything you're willing to let go of, then you can smudge it to clean off any negative energy that may have attached itself to it. But if you are a pet rat, um, throw the shit out. Okay, let's get this, let's get it together. It's 2019. Let's get it together. Okay, throw the shit out. You don't need those old bottles. You don't need those cigarette butts. You don't need those rats. Corpses hide it in the corner. Throw the shit out. Okay? Number nine, protection. Each night before turning out the lights and locking the doors, you want to create protection wards to keep your family safe when they are asleep. Your protection symbol can be anything symbolic to you. Such as a pentacle, pentagram, or sigil. At each door to your home and some of your windows in your house, draw a symbol of protection in the air. Or if you have that type of paint that you can paint on glass that washes off easily, you can use that too. Draw a symbol of protection in the air and over the doors. To protect your family while they are sleeping at night. And the last one, number 10. Dreams. Before going to bed at night, even tonight if you want to, if you happen to have these particular crystals, place a amethyst crystal under your pillow or underneath your bed with a little sachet with some mug wort and lavender and enjoy peaceful, vivid dreams. Keep a journal next to your bed so that when you wake up in the morning, 
you can jot down what messages spirit gave you. Write down any answers to any question that spirit gave you. Just interpret it. Because when you use lavender, lavender is known to give you a good night's sleep. And